you know, before before the Knicks did end their night, they actually did draft somebody, right? We got one Trevor Keels out of Duke guard, or, or some may say, like, difficult to know what position he's going to play in the NBA. He's a 6'4 guard coming out of Duke. Uh, another Dukey uh, <laughs> on the team. But, Jeff, since you are, you're, since you're a Knicks fan TV's draft expert, what do you got for us on uh, Trevor Keels? Yeah, Kills was a really interesting pick. Um, it's, you know, the, the funny thing about him is if his season stopped after that first game at Kentucky, well, actually in the Garden, um, his stock would have been crazy high because he did pretty much everything that night. Um, but he's a combo guard, you know, a six seven wingspan. He was one of the youngest kids in the draft. He'll actually turn 19 in August. Does a little bit of everything on the court. I would say his biggest strength and NBA ready skill is really using his strength, specifically his frame, his shoulders, when he's driving downhill. Um, you know, he can really shred defenders off of him. But when he gets to the rim, he finished just under 60% of his attempts at the rim. That's something that he's clearly going to need to be better at. He's also a very uh, right hand dominant driver, uses his left hand very sparingly. That's another area where he's going to need to improve. Um, but he's a decent playmaker out of the pick and roll. He has good vision. He can really set up bigs with good entry passes. I would say that he has a very high level basketball IQ. You watch him on the court. And one thing that I love about him is that he's a quick decision maker. So if he gets the ball, he's going to grab it and go. He's not going to spend time dribbling out on the perimeter. Um, you're not going to see him, you know, wasting possessions with his decision making, uh, which I like. Now, um, the shooting numbers were not good. You know, I think he shot 41% uh, from the field and 31% from three, 67% from the line. So uh, there's going to be some work that's needed in that area. I'm sure the Knicks player development staff probably feels that they can get him maybe uh, a little bit closer to his high school numbers. Um, I think sometimes I see his form when he's shooting, the way that his legs are staggered or sometimes a little bit inconsistent. You'll see the arc of his shot when he has time and he's in rhythm. Uh, there'll be a little bit more arc to his shot when there's not. It kind of has like a straight line path to the rim. Um, but one thing that you like about Trevor Keels is that he's confident. So he didn't pass up shots even when he had some really rough struggles, especially early in the year. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's an interesting pick. Again, I, I would have loved to have maybe seen um, adding a wing. If, if you're going to take Trevor Keels, who is 18, and you're somewhat looking at an upside play, but a guy that has a, a, a high floor as well, uh, again, I would have liked to have seen us maybe look at a wing in, in that area of the draft. But um, he's, he's a good player, and, and I think he definitely has a, a place in this league for sure. I don't see Keels getting a, a lot of playing time, especially at guard, since you have Emmanuel Quickly, you got Quentin Grimes, you got RJ Barrett, there's just a, you got Deuce McBride. There's just so many other players ahead of him for him to get burned. It, it's it's a it's a steep climb. But when I look at when I look at Keels, it's kind of giving me a PJ Tucker type of feel, where he's just like that tweener. Like you know, PJ Tucker's six five, but yet he's playing power forward and he's just stocky, built, strong. And I'm not saying that's what Trevor Keels is going to be, but I'm just kind of getting those type of vibes from him right now. But moving on to another player that the Knicks did. They didn't draft him, but they gave him uh, an Exhibit 10 contract, so he'll be with the team through Summer League uh, for the 20-man roster. Is Gene Montero. And Jeff, you actually wrote about Gene Montero beginning of last season. And has anything changed from when you, you, you wrote about him then to now? Do you see, have you seen any improvements, or has he been pretty much status quo? <laughs> I would say status quo. Um, this is the type of player that I'll give the Knicks credit. You, you would love to get a flyer on, um, you know, and, and sign him to an Exhibit 10 contract. I think a lot of people thought Montero would get drafted. Um, I, I think probably not the best indicator of the overtime elite league that he played in was that no one got drafted in the top 58 picks. So, um he is ex incredibly hard to evaluate. If you watch him, it's very clear that he's a scorer. I think his handle is probably his best NBA-ready skill. Can really execute a lot of different types of crossovers, in-and-out dribbles to be able to create space. 
His mid-range pull-up game is is pretty decent as well. Um, I really love the way that he can kind of navigate tight spaces in the pick and roll, even with a defender on his back. He's very comfortable making, you know, really precision based uh, bounce passes to cutting bigs. I think that's something he looks really good in. He's a flashy passer. You know, he's going to be somebody that's entertaining to watch. And I think he changes speeds very well. But the reason I say that he's hard to evaluate is because the talent level at Overtime Elite, uh, you know, it's your guess is as good as mine in terms of who else he was playing with on the court. Defense honestly looked like it was optional most of the time for most of the guys playing on the court. So I'm not really sure how he's going to translate. I read a ton of mocks this year, and there were some people that were really high on Montero and they had him, you know, as a lottery pick or in the 20s or in the back end of the first round. But, you know, again, just really, really difficult to evaluate. A questionable shot selection, decision making was rough at times for sure. Um, I, you know, but if you're drafting him, you're kind of banking on the fact that as, as a younger kid, you know, he was really highly touted. He won the MVP at the Basketball Without Borders camp, a camp that featured Benedict Matherin, who was a top 10 pick this year. So um, this is the exact type of guy that you want to get, um, you know, take a flyer on, you get him in your camp and, and you see how he does. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting. I think I think there's another guy that's going to be spending uh, most of his time in the G League. If he is with the team moving forward, Alex, do you have any thoughts on uh, Jean Montero? I haven't watched a ton of film. I've mostly just gone word of mouth with him, but I, I did talk about him a little bit. That is one guy that I did do a little bit of like second round research on because he intrigued me a bit. Um, going to OTE and being like sort of one of the first somewhat big name prospects to go there. Um, and I think it kind of hurt his stock uh, if he went undrafted. I mean, for a lot of the early, you know, draft uh, uh, columns last year, he was projected to potentially be like a, a mid to late first round pick, depending on how things went. Uh, so OTE is going to be interesting watching how that affects like the Thompson twins next year, too.